we will see how an input interface works with a parallel port so a classic example is taken in the case of keyboard so if you see the switches of the keyboard are shown here and those switches when impacted will produce electrical signals and those electrical signals will be converted to suitable digital representations by encoder and debouncing circuit so encoder is the actual part converting these electrical signals to digital form and the debouncing circuit is used to eliminate any debouncing effect from the keyboard right suppose that if you are pressing a switch uh, switch and the and the switch may have some uh, switch may have got some micro movements that mean it might get uh, repeatedly pressed again and again so that effect is cancelled by this debouncing circuit okay so uh, these two devices right your mechanical switches and the encoder and debouncing circuit will produce uh, data in parallel form okay the bits are in parallel form through different lines and supply to the input interface of the keyboard then whenever encoder of a keyboard produces a valid bit pattern which has to be transmitted as data to the input interface of the keyboard uh, it also generates a valid bit okay which tells the input interface that a valid data is being generated from the keyboard okay so we are done with the mechanical part of the keyboard so this entire area is the mechanical part and uh, what we are concerned about is this input interface how we are going to design the uh, the input interface for a parallel input okay and the parallel input being the data or the detailed data from the keyboard so what is an input interface circuit an input interface circuit acts as a mediator between your physical device and your processor so when your physical device pro 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 produces parallel input all right it is accepted by your input interface and it will communicate with the processor in a suitable way so that processor can take the data generated by your input device here your keyboard and so uh, there is a concept of port okay so what is port port is actually uh, the area of the input interface which accepts data from your underlying hardware so here if you see the the data is accepted over here right so this a region of the input interface is known as port so when we go to the next page we can actually see how a port looks like and uh, before that uh, we need to also see the other portions if you see the input interface uh, it uses asynchronous protocol here right so we are going to discuss an asynchronous input interface because master ready and slave ready signals are there and uh, if you see here processor can either read the contents from uh, the keyboard or it can issue a write operation usually write won't be happening and processor has a facility to supply address and it has also separate lines to accept data from the input interface okay so this is the general structure of a keyboard getting connected to the processor so we will see how all these things work together so this is the expanded view of your input interface okay so as i told the data coming from the encoder is accepted over here at the input interface and this region is your port okay so uh, this red region is actually your parallel port so if you see here all the devices right they are connected to processor in the same way if you see here all the devices are connected in parallel fashion but only the area that differs will be your port portion or that red portion this area this area will be different for different devices in case of keyboard it is a parallel port device so it will supply data to its input interface in a parallel fashion that's what you are say that's why you are saying different uh, bit lines here but ultimately all devices gets connected to the processor through interfaces like this okay uh, through the bus interface supported by the processor now uh, we need to first identify what are the basic tasks done by this in input interface so uh, the first thing is uh, this input interface will facilitate data from the keyboard to be held in a register known as data in okay data coming from keyboard will be going into data in and then upon suitable excitation it will be supplied to 
your processor so from here data moves through these buffers and then to your processor okay so that is the first duty then a second duty is whenever the master or cpu encodes about uh, the status of this keyboard it should supply the status so there should be some provision to give status information so obviously we know the status register in every io device so uh, in case of keyboard only one out of the many bits of the status register is significant that is sin so sin indicates whether the keyboard is having valid data in its registers that is data in so if data in is having a valid binary information sin will be turned to one right and sin here is uh, actually multiplexed over d0 that is one of the data lines of the uh, input interface that is the part facing the processor so that is another duty of this input interface that is to supply sin or the status information whenever your master demands then uh, so those are the two main duties okay to supply information contained in data in to the processor and to supply the status information to the processor then uh, we need to next identify which are the major regions which plays or alters the behavior of this device or this input interface so uh, if you consider the first and for first and foremost thing it is this address decoder okay this address decoder plays a major role in determining the operation of this device so in this example or uh, in this inter input interface design uh, the others have assumed that we are going to use memory mapped io operation so what is memory mapped io it means that all the devices uh, in particularly their registers will be given primary memory addresses so it means that this data in will be having a primary memory address similarly sin or uh, the status flag status register in its entirety okay including sin will have a primary memory address uh, or it will be given a part of the primary memory address okay so it means that uh, if you consider a device interface uh, so if you are going to consider this uh, keyboard interface it will be having multiple addresses associated with it okay so one address uh, might be associated with your status flags or status register another address might be associated with your data register and in some other, in uh, case of other devices even control registers can be given addresses okay so this address decoder plays an important role in input interface or deciding its uh, functionality okay so if you see the address pattern over here okay the the address is 32 bit address and uh, the uppermost 31 bits determines whether this entire interface has to be activated okay the uppermost 31 bits from a1 to a31 determines whether this entire input interface has to be selected then i as i told you there are two possible operations possible here uh, that is either you can read data in contents of data in or either you can read contents of sin right so either this or either this two things you can read so that is determined by this a0 bit the a0 bit of this address right from a0 to a31 determines whether you can read sin or whether you can read data okay so uh, the address decoder is an important portion then the next important portion is your uh, read or write signal okay read or write signal uh, will determine whether you can read the contents anything from this device interface okay another important thing is your master ready signal this master ready signal ensures that uh, the ac contents within data in or contents within sin is accessible to the master so these things are the major components of this input interface circuit and we have a slave ready circuit also this part tells this part actually in intimates the master that the slave is ready so we will check uh, one by one how these circuits function so the first functionality that we are going to explore is 
how the master is going to read the status of keyboard okay our typical case is keyboard status of keyboard from this input interface okay so we have to first find out where the status of the keyboard will be stored mm, so this was our port side right port side of the interface here data will be coming to data in or data in input register and i have already told you a valid bit will be coming whenever valid keyboard data is generated by the encoder circuit right so suppose that valid data is coming or valid signal is coming it is going to another circuit known as status flag generation circuit and the structure of the circuit we will examine later half so we have a status flag generation circuit and it generates a status bit known as sin okay suppose that sin is coming here and it is uh, its state is now in tri state buffer okay so this buffer is controlled by a control line so if you see here that control line is going straight down to this AND gate so it means that uh, if I need to read the contents that are incident on this SIN buffer I need to activate this control line okay this is the control line of this tri-state buffer so if this control line is active then only the input incident on the buffer will be available on its output or in short will be available as D0 okay so uh, sin is incident here i need to get this thing activated so i need to follow this line and see who is, who is responsible for activation so it is an and gate so this and gate has to be triggered for the activation of sin so our uh, path is like this uh, we need to get the bits generated from status flux circuit and then that will be incident over here and then uh, this person will decide whether the incident signal will pass through so this entire AND gate is a decision factor and the bits involved in that gate will decide whether that goes through or not so we will see how so all these lines are playing a major role and as I told you uh, the first important thing is the address section suppose that A1 to A31 is having a value that selects this entire interface okay so this entire interface is now activated or this device interface is activated now our purpose is to read SIN as I told you uh, there are two modes either you can read the data in or either you can read the status so in order to read status you have to give A0 S0 so once you give A0 S0 what happens this uh, in uh, this inverter will invert it and this input of AND gate will be one okay now uh, master ready has to be one why master ready has to be one because when master is ready for operation with the slave then the slave will supply uh, the required thing requested by the master so master ready has to also to be one or it has to be in high state and the read signal has to be activated why read signal because we are going to read from the status register or status bits so that has to be activated so in order to read the status of the keyboard we have to have the read signal on we have to have the master ready signal high and uh, we should select the status register or the status bit from within the input interface okay so if you want to select from the input interface you should first get the input interface selected so those to that is determined by these address bits okay a1 to a31 as well as a0 okay so in short what you can tell us uh, if you give the address corresponding to the address status register of this input interface along with read signal and master ready you will be able to read this status register, status register uh, bits or status register okay now we will see how we can uh, read data from this in input interface or it means the contents of data in or the contents from the keyboard so again we will follow a similar procedure we will see how uh, data in flows outside so data in flows outside through this through these tri-state buffers okay uh, a buffer is there for each individual bits here it is a 8 bit output going to your processor so there will be 8 buffers and each is controlled by a control line just similar to what SIN had again the design is similar again an AND gate decides the control so what are the inputs deciding whether the keyboard data will go to the CPU uh, the factors influencing are the read signal master ready then again the A0 okay so we will see how so in order to read the contents of data in read signal has to be given or the command has to be given by the CPU okay so that makes this input one then master ready has to be activated so that stable state will give a one here 
then uh, what is the ultimate thing is I told you this entire interface has to be first selected and within that data in has to be selected okay so in order to select data in one is required in the LSP and uh, A1 to A31 should select this entire interface so that they will take care and one is here so this one will negate this uh, and gate so this will be deactivated so we are not going to read status but this one will activate this and gate and hence all these buffers so your keyboard data will be available to CPU okay so we had observed how input interface works with respect to reading status and reading data okay now uh, we will see another important concept uh, we saw that uh, data can be transferred outside then uh, we also saw, saw that status can be transferred outside right and uh, before moving to how the status flag is generated right uh, we need to see some other thing that is in the case of slave ready signal when will slave ready signal be activated so let us consider this uh, reading of data in from your input interface so all these signals are there right so we have to first trace how slave ready is generated so slave ready is again controlled by a tri-state buffer whose input is always on but its control is determined by an OR gate and uh, what is that OR gate, OR gate dependent on it is dependent on these two AND gates okay if any of these two AND gate fires or is on then slave ready will be available as a continuous pulse so it means that uh, when you invoke this input interface either for a reading of data input uh, reading of data in register or reading sin for any of the these two reads if you activate this input interface slave ready will be active so it means that once master ready is incident and after some time all this decoding and uh, selection of whether da status or data is determined then slave ready will be activated okay so that completes the handshake mechanism of initiation part that is when master ready is incident for reading status or data slave will say that i am ready after some time based on the triggering of these and gates okay so uh, that is how a handshake for initiation completes next part that is remaining in this circuit is this status flag circuit so actually this circuit is a very critical circuit because uh, we all know that uh, the IO operation involving keyboard uh, critically relies on this status flag right because CPU can't waste its time always monitoring the keyboard uh, it will just approach the keyboard and read data from the keyboard only when SIN is 1 or there is an indication that a valid uh, bit sequence is available in data in and another important thing is when keyboard reads the data from data in okay, this SIN should be reverted back to 0 so that keyboard is not uh, again focusing on key this uh, no, so that CPU is not again focusing on the keyboard and it is going to do some other task so uh, the purpose of the status flag circuit is clear when valid keyboard data is available in data in or when this valid signal is activated what what should it do it should generate SIN okay it, or it should set SIN as 1 then when uh, the master or the CPU is reading contents from uh, data in right or when it is issuing a read operation and uh, when master ready signal is active this SIN should be set as 0 or it should be reset so we are going to see how that is done okay so uh, the first thing about this status flag circuit is suppose that if you are typing some keystrokes or if you are doing some keystrokes on the keyboard and uh, once valid bit sequence is available in data in how is uh, keyboard going to signal that uh, it is having valid data or how is keyboard go using the status flag generation circuit going to signal sin equal to 1 okay, so we will have a trace of that so if you see here you have a, a d flip flop right with with its input always set as 1 so output will be always 1 and provide and uh, the state of the flip-flop can't be changed with a without a pulse okay always a pulse should be there the rising edge pulse should be there to change the input of the uh, flip-flop okay and this input has got a clear input also so we will see how sin is set to 1 so what happens 
uh, initially when keyboard is idle and you are going to type something on the keyboard uh, obviously master won't be referring the keyboard right master ready will be zero then uh, as master is not currently interested in the keyboard the read data signal will also be zero okay then initially these two latches output will also be zero so this green color indicates initialization the latches outputs are initially zero or it means that the sin is initially zero so what we have now initially initially read data is zero master read is zero uh, sin is also zero now we will uh, actually walk through this zero actually inverts and becomes a one so it reaches here as one so it means this flip flop won't be cleared right so whatever one is here it will remain as such so it reaches this AND gate master ready zero it is inverted and becomes a one so this AND gate will be triggered so you have a one over here and i told you initially we have a zero over here so over is one it is inverted so we have a zero over here so this zero uh, will approach here and already read data is zero so we have or we have zero and exclusive or what happens we have a one okay so that's how that is how this is set okay so it means that uh, as long as master ready is zero and read data is zero and there is a valid pulse right sin will be set as zero now we will see the case of master checking sin okay so you have to remember that uh, once uh, master checks sin and it finds that uh, sin was initially one right or valid data is present in the keyboard it will initiate a read operation right and it will reinitiate a read operation and it will be reset to zero so we will see that so master is going to check sin right so a master comes with a master ready signal but it is not having the intention of reading so read data is zero so as read data is zero this uh, zero will approach here gets inverted and it will be one here so this flip flops out this flip flops output will be one as such so that will be one of the inputs of and master d is one so inverted and we have a zero we have a zero as it is an and we have a zero over here into one of the largest input and uh, we have initially sin1 okay assume that initially we have sin1 as sin is 1 what happens we have 1 and 0 over here so output will be uh, 0 and uh, so what happens we have a 0 over here and uh, 0 and 0 so we have a 1 here right so uh, that is how uh, the master checks sin that is master is able to sense that sin is active okay then uh, master clearing sin so when will master clear sin so master will clear sin when it is performing a read operation okay so master earlier detected that sin was one now master is coming for a read operation so this is one we will have a zero here so zero clears this flip-flop its output is zero master ready is initially one it is inverted and zero we have a zero over the here over here in the end gate um, and then uh, what happens so uh, we have a zero here then uh, so this is zero uh, but uh, the thing is uh, we have a 1 over here from sin so this 1 and 0 it will be 1 and output will be 0 and uh, we have a 0 over here read data is 1 so it is 1 and we will have a 1 over here and it will be uh, 0 so this is the final thing this blue color it indicates that we have an ultimate 0 okay so this is how uh, master clears sin